Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks, and I'm joining you today to pray for the seven mountains of influence, which is what we do together as we come together during our lunch break. And I want to encourage you to use this time to pray, 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 pray for your communities, to see God transform, to see God advance his kingdom. And there's many blessings for intercession. And so we want to pray for our communities to see God move. And he answers through prayer. Amen. So we want to pray. Today we're praying for children to be raised in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so it's important for us to fear the Lord. Now that word for fear in Hebrew is reverence. That's holy reverence because Perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment. So it's not the fear of man, because fear of man brings a snare, right? Those who trust in the Lord will be safe. We're not fearing God because we're afraid he's going to punish us, but we have holy reverence for him. We respect and honor him. We, You think about the priests who went into the Holy of Holies when they did their priestly acts. That was so important because one false move, you know, someone that was not ordained or supposed to touch the Ark of the Covenant, and it touched they could die we saw that in scripture as well as Aaron's sons who set up strange fire they made an abomination to the Lord they weren't supposed to be doing that and they were actually ordained to do work of the Lord but they weren't supposed to be doing that work so we want to have such reverence for God we're under grace we're in the dispossession of grace but God still takes these things very very seriously amen the veil was torn we're able to boldly before go before the grace of the throne of God right But we want to take this very, very seriously. We want to reverence God because then we're going to do what he says. If we have holy reverence for him, we respect and honor him, we're going to be obedient to him. And we'll be successful because obedience is better than sacrifice. God is after relationship. And so we want to walk in that godly relationship with him. We know Hebrews 11 tells us that Noah had holy fear of him. Thank God, right? Because through Noah... God created the nations of the world. Amen. Because before that, everything was wiped out. By faith, Noah, Hebrews 11 tells us, 11 and 7 rather, when warned about things not seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. So his holy fear led him into obedience. That's what we want for us. When we fear the Lord, we will do what he says. Yes, we're still going to miss it sometimes, but less likely will we than when we have this apathy, right? Which we see in the church today. We see in the world. It's a, not a reverence for God. There's a disrespect, actually a dishonor of God and the things that are holy. You know, coming to church any kind of way where we're uh, disrespecting the Lord. So you want to repent for dishonoring and disrespecting God before we pray for the children to be raised in the fear of the Lord. We also want to be reminded that we're supposed to walk in the fear of the Lord. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 14 tells us that Moses instructed the children of Israel about this. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. So everything belongs to God. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There's no lack in his kingdom. So we want to serve God, not because of what he can do for us, although without faith it is impossible to please God because those who come to him must believe that he is, and he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So we, we know that he is a rewarder. But we're serving him because we love him. Amen. He first loved us. We love him. And we're going to do that out of holy reverence because he knows all things. There is no other way but God's way. His way is the only way and he knows everything. So we submit to him and our plans are going to succeed as we commit our plans to him. So we want to walk this. I want to teach our children to walk that way so they won't be deceived, so that they will, they will be successful. And then they'll save themselves a lot of trouble if they have fear of the Lord. And then because it's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One, his understanding. So Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and your understanding, your 
full of knowledge. You're full of mercy. Your mercies are new every morning. And we want to just thank you, Father God, for your goodness and who you are. We're so blessed to serve an awesome and a mighty God who knows all things. There's no lack in you. There's no misunderstandings. You know everything. You see our hearts and you weighed the hearts. So we thank you, Father God, for your goodness. And even though that you see us, you love us in spite of who we are, even our mistakes. And, and you don't see us as our mistakes. You see us as holy as you are holy. You see us beautiful. You see us as fearfully and wonderfully made. You're so amazing and an awesome God. We repent, Father God, for dishonoring you and disrespecting you, Father God, for not coming uh, with the fear and reverence of you that you deserve, Father God. You're awesome. So we bow down before you right now, Father God, in holy reverence. And we just lay our cares at the altar. We lay it all before you, Father God, because we don't want anything to separate us from you, Lord. We don't want anything to separate us from your presence in this moment. We surrender all, Lord. We surrender it all to you and we submit to you, Father God. We submit every plan. We submit every way. We submit every anchor that's tried to hold us back, hold us down. We lay it at your feet, Father God. And we ask you, Lord, to go into our hearts, to heal and restore those areas, Father God, where we have been and fear of you out of punishment and not fear and reverence. Heal our hearts and minds because we have the minds of Christ, but sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we don't think about things as we ought. Sometimes we say things that we shouldn't say and we're not being respectful. You're not reverencing you. So forgive us, Father God, for not giving you the holy reverence that you deserve. You're so amazing and you're so patient with us. You're gentle and kind. You're long suffering. And we thank you for that, Father God, for your goodness, Lord. We pray now, Father God, that you would help us raise the children in the fear of the Lord. We know that that's the beginning of wisdom and we want them to be wise, Lord, so they can make wise decisions and, and give them discernment too, Father God. We pray, Lord, that they would be children after you on heart, that they would continue to press into you. But help us to train them, Father God, to raise them in the fear of the Lord, that they would see us uh, walking circumspectly, walking with the contrite hearts, that we would be people that are walking, following your will and your way. Help us to train them up and to show them with their own words that we would not be hypocrites, not telling them one thing, but doing something else. Help us to walk out this life before you, Father God, and heal our hearts and minds. Help us to forgive ourselves if we have not been training the children the way that they should go. Help us, Father God, to forgive ourselves for not doing what you called us to do. We ask you, mm, some parents may be angry with themselves, blaming themselves for children that have strayed away, that are wayward in this hour. They may be thinking, oh, I didn't raise them right. And so now they're doing these things. And Father God, you see us and you forgive us as we confess our sins to you. You make everything beautiful and it's time and you work all things out together for good. You knew uh, what the children were going to do even before they did it. You still love them. You still love us, but help us even now, Father God, to reach out to those children, some of those older children, Lord, to speak life into them, to pray with them as they're open, Father. And we pray for open doors to reach out to the children. We pray, Father God, that you would prepare their hearts to receive the gospel, to receive some have turned away from the gospel. We pray for these prodigal children to come home, that they would come home like the Luke 15 prodigal who came home and the father was running towards them. Help us to be open-minded to them and to be gracious and merciful, not holding over their heads their mistakes, Lord, because it's covered in the blood, just like that father. He said to the older brother, your brother who was dead in sin is now alive again. So help us, Father God, to rejoice and celebrate, to kill the fattened calf, to get the, the good coat out, to get things out, to prepare, to celebrate them. Help the other children to prepare. Some are jealous of each other, Father God. We pray that you heal those wounds and heal the jealousy, Father God. Remove the jealousy from even us, from the parents who may be looking at the child. But help us, Father God, in this hour to remove anything that's not like you, Lord. We want to be as you've called us to be, and we can't do that with these hindrances. So, Father God, remove these things from us. Help us and to work with our children. Help the children to go farther than we've gone. Help this generation to surpass us, to go even farther than we've gone. And we've gone far and we continue to go far. But help us, Lord. We want this generation to rise up victoriously, miraculously doing the work that you've called them to do. So help us to train them. Help us to speak life into them. Help us not to 
mm, to ridicule them because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Father God, remove any provoking spirits in our midst. Father God, remove them from us. If some of us are provoking the children to anger, provoking them, exasperating the children, Father God, heal those wounds too of exasperation. Encourage the children, Father God, with your love. Help them, Lord. Father God, give them a spirit of prayer <clears throat> that they would rise up early to pray, that they would mm, walk in your power, Father God. Help us to be living epistles, read of all men, that we would be living witnesses of your power and your glory. Give us more gentleness to work with them, more patience, Father God. Give us the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, that we may walk as you walk and talk like you talk, we want to be walking in the spirit, Lord, living by the spirit, Lord. Remove anything that's not of your spirit. Uh, this, this flesh of ours, Father God, we crucify it now. And we say no mas, no more. Because we want to walk like you walk, God. We want to look like you look. We want more of your character, Lord. And we know that comes from endurance. Help us to endure in this hour. Help the children to endure. Some have been even experiencing affliction at young ages, but many of the afflictions of the righteous and you deliver us from them all. So we thank you, Father God, for these afflictions are but momentary afflictions and they're producing for us a far greater eternal weight of glory. So we thank you, Father God, for our afflictions. We thank you, Lord, because you've delivered them from us and we walk higher. We walk further than we ever imagined. So heal the children, Father God, and help us to train them in the way that they should go. Help us to speak the word of God to them. Help us to pray with them. Help us to train them up, giving them revelation and helping them discern from you, Father God, and that you would give them revelation. Help us to listen when they're speaking, Lord, as they're speaking your word back to us, Father God. They have revelation power. They have rhema words that they're hearing from you, Father God. Help us to listen, Lord. And that we would not turn aside just because it's the children speaking, because out of the mouths of babes, you are speaking out of the mouths of babes. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the revelation from these children, that you're raising them up quickly and swiftly. They're running to do the work of the Lord. They're running to, to speak the gospel. They're running to evangelize. And we thank you, Lord, for their running. They're running swiftly without any hindrances. They're running uninhibited. And we thank you, Father God, or their free trot is blessed. And blessed are their feet for those who spread and preach the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy with these precious children. They are bright lights shining for your glory, Father God. They are brightly shining in this hour. And we bless you because of them. You bless us with these precious children. So we thank you, Father God, for the children in our community. We bless their parents and we pray for the small group leaders. We pray for the pastors. We pray for the youth ministry leaders. All those that are coming in contact with these children, the ushers, that they would speak life into these children and come against every demonic assignment to discourage these children. And we pray for favor, 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 favor to come upon them. Favor for these precious children to do the work that they would grow in favor with God. And then we pray for favor for them, Father God, that they were bound in favor. You are an awesome and a mighty God. You're raising them up for a mighty work. And we thank you for it, Lord. We bless you, Father God. You are so good. You're holy. You're blameless, God. You have been so, so good to us. And we love you, Lord. And we thank you for your power. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all of who you are. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is so good. We serve an awesome God. You hear me say that so much because he is. He's so awesome and he's so good. And we thank him. Thank him. I thank you also for joining us to pray. I thank you so much. I thank you so much, so much. Uh, you, you, you hear me say us a lot too. I'm here with Jesus. Amen. I'm here with Jesus. Our heavenly father is here too. Amen. We're never alone. So you hear me say us because in the presence of angels, amen, there's angels all around us. So I thank God for the heavenly host. I thank God uh, for what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Jesus is captain of the host. And we thank God for the, for the heavenly angels that are with us. Amen. They're in our midst in our midst. And they're in our midst and, and be careful. Some who have entertained angels unaware of what they've entertained strangers, but they're angels, they're angels in the midst. Amen. So be blessed on today. Continue to press forth, continue to pray, 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 pray like never before. We're in the end of the end times, beloved. And we want to just continue to pray because we want to see God's will done on the earth. It's not quite time yet, but we see signs that we know we're in the end of the end and we want to be prepared. We want our families to be prepared. We want our communities to be prepared because we want the others to join us in heaven. Amen. We want to look up and see our family members, see our coworkers, see those outside. So 
It's important to forgive to others. Forgive, forgive, forgive. God is good. Amen. Be blessed and continue to join with us as we pray the seven mountains of influence. Be blessed.